What is up guys this is Pinzo back with another video today and what I have for you guys is my addition to the pool of build guides. Uh, Reaper started this and then Crashy did one and then Joe yours truly did one and he tagged me on Twitter and told me to do a support one. So I'm going to do a support build guide. I feel pretty confident in my support play you guys if you guys saw PCC uh, there's a decent amount of supports getting played right now and yeah, so we're going to go over a build guide. I'll have a link to the other three down below so that if you guys want a mid lane jungle or solo build guide, they'll be down below. We're going to use Omida City for this because this is probably just the easiest way for me to do it. You can see all the items here, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is the easiest way. So first of all, I will not be putting Tainted Guard Rush in these builds. I am recording this on Monday. The patch goes live Tuesday that nerfs Tainted Guard. Uh, you're not going to be rushing it anymore, so I'm not going to bother with it. Second of all, I won't be doing the kind of fringe supports. I might mention some people, but I'm not going to be doing the fringe supports. These are just going to be the supports that you should like actually be playing. And third of all, if you guys go on to enjoy the content, be sure to leave it a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of the builds down below. And we're going to jump right into this. I'm going to try and make it a little, a little bit quick. I'm not going to go over every single situation for every single item. These are core support builds. The thing you have to think of, you have the thing you have to keep in mind with support is that after your first item, you're getting all the rest of your items later on support, later than everyone else. You should be behind in gold. That's just kind of how the, the how the role works. So the thing you have to think about is that after about your third item, you are in complete flex territory. Even if you think you know what you want to build at the beginning of the game, the way that you know their mid laner gets way far behind, and or or he disconnects or whatever, right? You don't need magic damage, right? That third item onwards is where you're going to start feeling that impact. So I'll mention some of those, give you guys some good flex options. It's pretty situational, so I'll do my best to explain when you want what. So starting us off, this is going to be Decker. Uh, I don't know if I can make it show the hero somewhere, but this is a Decker build. Uh, first of all, you have to choose Decker is one of the few characters that you have the choice to go either Silentium or Riftwalkers. Obviously, if you're against something like a Fae, I would almost always recommend getting Reclamation. But if you aren't against that and or you have some, you know, you have something else to play around it, uh, I would go Silentium all the time. I don't think Tranquility is very good right now. You just aren't building enough power to make this heal for enough. So I would, I would pretty much always go Silentium if you're going into the consort crest if you are going the other one you have you can go leaf song like if you're against a gadget or something like that but you're pretty much going rift walkers on on, on decker and it does change your play style so i'll give you two builds here the first one's going to be rift walkers the thing you have to think think about with rift walkers is that you are committing to being in the front line so this build's going to look a little bit funky but this is what i would do i would go first item raiment of renewal which looks kind of wacky it does but it gives you the stats you need it'll make you actually tanky Followed this up with a set with a tainted scepter. This is going to give you all the damage you need early. If you are uh, fighting more tanks, or like even early game, right? If they have a rampage or even like a Richter jungle, some or a steel support, something like that, your third item is going to be dynamo. But you can make this the second item if you need to. If if you're feeling like you're you're dying too fast or if you're hitting too many tanks, dynamo second is really strong. Go tainted scepter third. If you feel like you're ahead, go tainted scepter second. Uh, and then the last two items, again, these are going to be a little bit of flex, but you probably still, you need, you need defense here, right? So your options for these items are going to be like Galaxy Greaves, Void Helm, uh, Stone Wall is really good. You know, those are, those are kind of the three that I would recommend at the end of these kinds of builds is, is pretty much Stone Wall, Void Helm, Galaxy Greaves. You can go Tainted Totem if they have a lot of healing that you, that you need to, to be able to stop. This is kind of what I would look at. You know, you're very tanky with builds like this. I, I, I d would not build damage in these last two slots. Pretty much any defense item will do. I just wouldn't build damage. If you build damage, you're going to hamstring your ability to engage because you're going to instantly die. And that's just kind of tough. This is what I do, would do. Something like this for Riftwalkers builds. Uh, maybe on, if you're going Dynamo here, you're going Void Helm first. But something like this for Riftwalker builds is, is what I would recommend. Now, if you are going Silentium, which I would recommend. Again, don't go Tranquility. Silentium's really good. Go, 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 go Silentium first. Uh, I would maybe switch this up. So if you have the Silentium, what this allows you to do is it allows you to sit in your back line and you don't have to engage. You can just peel. I would only go, like, I would only commit to this build if you have engage. If you don't have engage, then you can go Silentium and go this exact same build. Just do this with Silentium and then you're good to go. If you have engage and you're able to sit back, you can drop the raiment of renewal and move the rest of this up 
and then grab uh where are you a spell breaker in the back here so some, something like this. You can grab a Spellbreaker at the end. It's going to give you a decent amount of damage. You're still fairly tanky. Just know that you can't engage with this build. You're too squishy. You have to sit on your carry and just peel whoever's fighting your carry. That's how you play this build. Uh, Silentium's really strong. If you uh, stun, ult, and then silence someone, you have like six seconds where they don't get to use abilities. It's really strong. Highly recommended. I, I would prefer the Silentium build most games, unless you really, for some reason, feel like you're going to have to make plays, then Riftwalker is good. Moving on, we're just going to go down the list here. This isn't like in any kind of tier list order. This is just going down the list. Uh, honorable mentions to Faye and Howie here. You can play both of them in support if you do build full damage. I don't think it's very good, so I don't recommend it, but you can. Next real support is going to be Belle. I think she's probably like number two support, maybe right behind Decker. Really strong. I would always go Silentium. Unless the enemy team has a Fey, in which case you can go Reclamation if you need to. Silentium's really strong. I would go Silentium like most games. On Bellica, you do have some options here. I would pretty much always go Galaxy Greaves first. You are immobile, but the Galaxy Greaves gives you a lot of, you know, potential to get high. It lets you dodge a lot of abilities that you shouldn't be able to dodge. Really good first item, and then I would go into Dynamo. You're really tanky with this start. Physicals can't damage you, like, at all, really. This is 100 physical defense between these two items. Really, really strong. You don't do any damage, but you shouldn't. Um, I would also pretty much level your Q first every game because the cooldown goes down. I, I, would, I would pretty much max the Q every game. After this, again, you, you have flex potential here, but I've, I've been quite liking Tainted Totem, to be honest. This gives you the slow aura, but it's also split defense. So between Tainted Totem and Galaxy Greaves, which are both pretty cheap items, by the way, uh, you are getting 75 physical prots and 60 magical prots on top of CDR, mana regen, etc. You don't need any more mana regen than those two items. You're getting a lot of, of cooldown reduction off of them. And you don't need magical, you don't need that much magical defense early in the game. A lot of mages are going uh, flat pen first, right? You're not seeing like, like Acoustica's third item. Like that's not really happening. And these will defend you against those flat pen builds. You don't need a heavy, a heavy energy defense or heavy magical defense item this early. Your fifth item or your fourth item here, I would go more physical defense. So this is probably going to be something like a stone wall. Uh, again, you have a lot of flexibility here. If the enemy team has a lot of auto attackers, you can obviously go Warden's Faith instead. Generally speaking, I think Stonewall is a better item, but Warden's Faith, if they have, you know, a carry offlane or something like that, sometimes Warden's Faith is just necessary. Uh, the other thing you can do right here is if you're going to build damage, I would build it in this slot. I would build a Tainted Scepter. That's pretty much the only damage item I would build. Megacosm, you would think is just as good, but it does not have health on it. This has 200 health on it. It makes it a much better item. Believe it or not, 200 health matters a lot. Uh, and then if you do go this Tainted Scepter, I would finish off the build probably with a Spellbreaker. This is going to give you a, a, a little bit of damage here. You're, gonna, you're not going to hit very hard, but like with someone with no mana, your ult can maybe hit for 7, 800. Uh, pretty solid. The other thing that I would do is I would drop Tainted Scepter if you're against like a tanky team and just go Stonewall into Spellbreaker. The Spellbreaker is a lot of damage on its own, but again, your job here is to peel. With Stonewall, you can peel when you hit low HP. Dynamo obviously shreds defense. Galaxy Greaves lets you dodge a lot of damage, and Tainted Totem has a slow aura that lets you peel. This is what I would build, you know, most games with Bellica. If you're ahead, if you guys are running it down, that kind of thing. If you don't have enough gold to buy a full item, you know, this can be a Tainted Scepter if you want it to. But that this is this is pretty much it. Next up, Muriel. Muriel is an odd one because she's the first in, like true enchanter that we hit. You cannot build this character tank. I really don't think you can. So you kind of are forced to be damaged a little bit. So lots of utility items are going to go on Muriel. Muriel, you can go Tranquility on Muriel. It gives you uh, 20 haste on the item. So it lets you give, get your ults on a much lower cooldown. It's okay. You are building more, more actual power. You're not going to have a lot of power, but uh, Tranquility scaling is like 50%. It's 50% of your magical power goes as healing. So if you are building some more damage, this will get more heals. Keep in mind, it's a short cooldown. Gives you 10% damage mitigation. It's a pretty good active. But uh, I, at the end of the day, I think I would, generally speaking, still rather have Silentium. If the enemy team, again, has just absolutely nothing for you to silence, Tranquility is a fine pickup. On Muriel, 
you have to start the game and know whether or not you want to go Requiem. This is pretty much the only character I would go Requiem on. You have to know whether or not your team wants the stats that Requiem gives. So Requiem, for those of you who don't know, it's aura stacks when kills happen. And when it gets stacked, it gives your team, it gives your, your it gives you an aura of physical power and physical lifesteal. Um, well, I guess lifesteal. It's not Omnivamp. It's not magical lifesteal. It's just lifesteal, right? So you have to know whether or not you want that. If you have a Severog solo and a Richter jungle, you don't want that. It's the only person benefiting is your carry. If you have a, you know, a Grux solo and a, a Chimera jungle or a, a Crunch jungle, right? Those are characters that do want those stats. Those are actually really good stats on those characters. So in that case, you can go the Requiem and it, and it, is, it is decent. I would not go Requiem unless you have three other Requiem users on your team. You aren't using it. Your mid laner's not using it. Your carry always will use it. I think unless you have a solo laner and a jungler that want to use it, giving you, again, three total Requiem users, that's the only time I'm buying it. I don't think it's very good, uh, but in that situation, it's hard to pass up. Generally speaking, is so if you're not going Requiem, you're going first item Marshall almost every game. Even if you have a Revenant, I still think Marshall is pretty strong. If you have any other auto attackers, it's strong. Uh, if you have a Revenant and zero other auto attackers, go Crystal Tier. Uh, Wellspring is probably your next item. This is actually a pretty solid item. Gives you power, gives you heals. Uh, heals on top of shields is always something that's good. Third item, probably going to be Tainted Totem. Increases your shields. Really good item. Uh, allows you to peel a little bit for your carries. And then now the build gets a little bit funky because you do want power on this character, right? But you also don't want to insta-die. So something like a Spellbreaker here is actually not too bad. It's going to give you a decent amount of power. It's going to let you... Um, make a mistake, right? You're not going to get instantly hooked or, or thunked and die, right? So you have a little room to step a, a toe out of position, but uh, it is, it's, a, it's a decent item here. Then for your final item, you know, you have the options of going something like a Galaxy Greaves if you feel like you personally need to be a little bit tankier. Uh, your other option is to just go power here, right? This last item, it can be something like... Uh, like a like a time warp or something like that right generally speaking or it could it could be an astral catalyst even right you know something that's going to give you some damage you probably want cdr on this item right it could be it could even be like a true silver if that's really what you're feeling it, it, this last item on on Ariel specifically is pretty wide open um this is where you could build crystal tier if you didn't build it earlier uh, if you did build or if you if you went uh requiem right this is probably where i would not go crystal tier go requiem first that kind of thing um her her last item i'd i'd recommend like something with power something with haste that kind of thing it could i don't you know it, it's kind of your choice if you need defense again galaxy guru is probably your best option split defense really strong that late so something like this for your muriel builds is going to let you keep alive spam your shields on your back line just sit next to your carry you win the game Darbash. So, Bash is an odd one because he actually uses many, many crests very well. He uses Silentium, the same as everyone else. He uses Malediction, or sorry, Reclamation, the same as everyone else. If they have a Fey, go Reclamation. If they don't, Silentium's really good. However, on Narbash, you can also do something else. If you're going, if you know you need an early True Silver, you can go Sanctification, and you can stack that on top of your True Silver shield and keep your CC immunity a little bit longer. You can also go Leaf Song. I would not go Riftwalkers. Leaf Song, it's getting a buff in this upcoming patch, 20 seconds off the cooldown. It's going to be a pretty solid item. I think you can go this. It has defense on it. Um, for the purpose of this, I'm going to I'm gonna probably put Sanctification in here. I think this is the safest crest on Narbash. If you really have to peel your back line, I would go Silentium. But uh, I, I think this is probably the safest crest on Narbash at the moment. If Leaf Song is really good after this, it might change. Uh, so on Narbash, your first item... In my opinion, again, you have the option on Narbash to go Requiem. If you don't have Requiem users, don't go Requiem. It's not worth it. The stats for you aren't worth it. I know it gives mana regen. I don't care. If you're Narbash and you don't have Requiem users, go Crystal Tier. OP item on Narbash. It gives, you, it gives everyone around you 20 haste as long as you have heals. Uh, after this, I'd probably go something like a Marshall. Um, as long as you, again, don't have a Revenant. This is a pretty solid item. And this is where I would start going tank. I would go into Tainted Totem. I would maybe even go Moon Boots afterwards. And then for your final item, you can look at something like a Raiment of Renewal, which is not a bad item on Narbash. Or you can look to get a tiny bit more power to boost those heals just a little bit um, in the form of something like a Wellspring 
or even a, a, a spell breaker here, right? It, your, your, your healing does scale off of your power a little bit. It's not a lot, but a little bit. So, you know, something like that's not bad. If you just need more defense, again, something like Void Helm or uh, Stonewall, probably your best single big defense options, depending on what's killing you. If you are going true silver, I would go it in this slot. I would go in the third slot and just push everything back once. Uh, if you are against a very heavy CC comp for some reason, you can build it second. Um, if they have a Richter, a Steel, a uh, Drongo, and, uh, and, a, and a Fey or something like that, right? Something crazy amounts of CC, you can build it second. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can drop True Silver. I actually don't mind dropping this item. If you just, you, you have to position a little better with your ultimates, but you can drop this item. I don't think that's a bad thing. You can do it. And I would probably go Frost Guard last. It's probably like, you're probably going to need physical defense at that point. It's probably the best last item. So that's kind of how you should be building Narbash. Again, it depends. If you're going Requiem, I would, if you're going Requiem here, I would drop the, the Frost Guard and just play, you have to play further back, period. Um, and if you want to go Requiem with uh, True Silver, then drop Galaxy Greaves, and you're going to be squishy. You're going to die a lot. That's just how it is. You're going you're gonna to die a lot, so sorry. I don't recommend it, but that's, if you want to, that's, that's what's going to happen. So this is kind of what I recommend for Narbash. Moving on, Phase. So Phase is an interesting one because I think a lot of people play her incorrectly. <sighs> the suspense. So the reason you play Faye wrong is because you think Faye's only job is to sit in the back line and pull people out of danger. Faye is, uh, Faye's, while she can do that, she can, you can build her, I would pretty much use like the, the, the Decker build, the Decker Salentium build, if you're going to play Faye's like that and just pull people out of danger, it's, it's the same. How I would recommend playing Faye's is actually pulling people into danger. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but Faye's right click is a free engage. If you have a character like a Grux who has no engage or a character like a Rampage who doesn't want to have to use his jump to engage, if you, uh, you know, link to that ally, and then you ult and throw them into a fight. They now have a bunch of move speed, a bunch of attack speed, and a bunch of omnivamp. They can't die. They're menaces. Grux specifically is a, is a menace with phase. So keep that in mind. That's how I play the character. So with that in mind, I'm going to give you pretty much an aggro build. This is going to be a defense aggro build. I would go Leaf Song. I think it's nuts with phase. You ult, you Leaf Song, it's crazy. Gives defense, decent item, getting buffed this patch. I would go this most games. If they have a Fey, you can go Reclamation. It's fine. Sometimes you're forced to do that. Uh, as far as items go, I would go probably Galaxy Greaves first. Again, I kind of like Bellica. It gives you some mobility that you don't have, lets you escape a lot. Pretty solid item anyway. Uh, your next item here can be, you know, uh, like it can be a Tainted Totem. If you need some split defense, I'd probably go a Tainted Totem at some point in this build anyways. Like I'd maybe build this third most games, but you can build this here. Uh, other than that, you're kind of, again, you're kind of going full defense or full, yeah, full defense. It sounds, because it sounds weird, but I, I it, it works. Trust me, this, this is how I would play this character. I'd probably go Galaxy Greaves. You can go Raymond. You can interchange these depending on what, on what you like. I'd probably go Tainted Totem next. And then your last couple items here are, are probably going to be heavy defense. Stonewall gives you some CC that you don't have in your kit. I really like Stonewall. I think it's a very, very strong item. And then your magical defense item can be a little up in the air. Because you're going full defense, Crystalline's actually an option. You, you want to be in the middle of the fight. This isn't actually like a decent option. Otherwise, I think Void Helm is the safest option. Gives you more, more HP, gives you more CDR, uh, gives you more regen, movement speed. This is probably, generally speaking, the better choice. Obviously, if they are primarily auto attackers, switch out Stonewall for Warden's Faith. This is what I would build on phase. Run into the fight, throw your, your best melee fighter in there, force them to engage. That's how I'd play her. She's, really, she's actually fairly strong, trust me. Uh, Richter is the next one we're going to go over. Uh, Richter's a tough one because he's been nerfed a lot, actually, in the support role to make him more of a jungler. Kind of stinks. But uh, on Richter, you can go Riftwalkers. I don't like it very much, actually. I don't know why. It just feels kind of bad to Riftwalkers and then stand still. Um, even if you hit, like, two or three people with your ult, I just think it feels kind of bad. If you're going to go Guardian Crest, I, I would probably recommend going Sanctification. Otherwise, I really like Silentium. It allows you to lock someone down for another second and a half. I think this is probably his best starter item. First item, you're going Raymond. Again, Tainted Guard getting, is getting nerfed. It's getting changed. Uh, by the time you guys are seeing this video, it's been changed, right? So go go Raymond first. It's it's your probably your best option at the moment. 
Uh, I'd mostly follow this up with Galaxy Greaves. I think it's a really strong combo. Lets you run around the map pretty, pretty easily. And then you're going to need a little bit of magical defense here. So I would go something like Unbroken Will. You know, if they have a Steel or a Grux, Unbroken Will is a pretty easy pickup. Um, if they don't, you can go something heavier on the magical defense, like, a, like an earlier Void Helm or something like that. Uh, if they have a lot of physical defense, or if they have a lot of auto attackers, Frost Guard's really, really strong. I really like this item right now. Um, I would, if they're, you know, heavy physical, I would go Frost Guard third here, and then, uh, you know, your magical defense, unbroken, etc. And then your last item, I like Tainted Totem. There's a lot of just random healing in the game that Tainted Totem is going to help with. Lifesteal, um, Omnivamp, you know, all this kind of stuff is, you know, it's present. If you're running down a carry, anti-healing them a little bit, just by being near them is really strong. So I, I really like having Tainted Totem in my builds. Magical damage towards tanks right now is actually not that bad. Like, believe it or not, it's not that bad. Once they have Caustica, you're going to get shredded anyway. It's 40% penetration on one item. You're kind of going to die no matter what. So you don't need to fully stack defense. If they have a lot of crowd control, Unbroken was really strong. Otherwise, go Void Helm here. Uh, you can also swap out this Tainted Totem. If you're just dying to carries, swap it out for a, a Warden's Faith. If you're dying to like a to like crunch and stuff like that goes go stone wall um this this last option is flex again i like the tainted totem i think it's the anti-heal is just pretty valuable most of the time but you can always swap this out for heavier defense if you need something specific uh next hero last hero is gonna be is gonna be steel again there are some other things you could you could say you want to play like rampage and stuff like that but i wouldn't it's just gonna be harder than it is gonna be worth it uh steel very similar to, to 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 richter the only difference is i think most games are going rift walkers because again the the issue the reason i don't like rift walkers on richter is because it, it you stand you rift if you rift walker ult someone you stand still like it just feels kind of bad whereas on steel you can rift walker right click or rift walker ult or rift walker dash like you have a lot of options you don't have to stand still to do it uh feels better i would go rift walkers most games on this character it just feels pretty good uh, as far as the build, very, very similar. You're going Raymond, you're going Dynamo, you're going, um, where's Magic? You're probably going Unbroken Will. Again, Unbroken Will is a little situational, but if they have a Steel or a Grux, you're going Unbroken Will. You're, you're unkillable to those characters. Or if they have a Crunch, Crunch is a really good Unbroken Will like build into. So he does a little magical damage and he has infinite CC. You're always getting Unbroken Will procs. Um, these three items are pretty core, I would say, on Steel. At the end of this build, you're probably going like a Void Helm and and uh, and a Stone Wall. These are maybe the other order here. Uh, this is pretty much what you, what you're building on Steel. This is what I'm building most games. Uh, you can build the Dynamo on Richter as well. It's not bad. I just feel like you get less value out of it. I don't know why it feels like that. The Dynamo, like obviously, it's good on the hook target. Shred that shred that defense right but i really think that on richter you just shouldn't be hooking tanks like i know that sounds dumb like don't hit the tank forehead but like that's just uh, if you're hooking a tank um it, it's kind of giving them a free engage right it's it's kind of a downside actually so if you're hooking squishies you don't need the dynamo anyway so that that's kind of where i'm at on dynamo on richter that's just how it is but dynamo on steel you tend to be hitting the front line more just because you don't have an uh you know a get over here button you have to run at them right so if you're rift walker and and sh shield bashing right right clicking then you're hitting tanks more often than not and you're shredding a lot of defense this is the build i'd go on steel again you can swap out this stone wall for the warden's faith if you're against auto attackers you can swap out this void helm for crystalline curious if you're against uh, Shinbi or something like that, right? Like you, you have a lot of options at the end of these support builds. I don't think that Tainted Guard will be very strong after this patch, unless you are playing solo lane and going Tainted Guard, Tainted Bastion combo. Uh, I wouldn't really build Tainted Guard in support going after this patch, at least if it gets it nerfed as much as we think it is, which I strongly believe that it's not like the damage will be negligible after this. It would be a, a decent item if you need it late in the build. Like, let's say you really need Tainted, but you need a more physical defense. You could maybe replace this Stonewall with Tainted Guard, right, on, on all of these builds. As of now, I don't see that happening. But uh, yeah, that's actually going to be all the supports. So I will do my best to timestamp everything and link everything else down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you have questions. Again, it, it's a little hard to say for sure what to build because on support, a lot of your stuff is utility. So some games you need a lot different utility than you need other games. 
Uh, whereas something like a damage roll, like carry or mid, you're basically building whatever gives you the most damage every game. So let me know if you guys are confused on anything. Let me know what you guys think down below. But that's all I've got for you guys. So as always, I've been Pinzo. This video is done, Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.